Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be working on the countdown timer for our game. So if we look at the bottom sort of middle section of our heads up display you can see we've got this cool looking timer. What we're going to be doing with the game is we are going to give the player five minutes for each level and we're going to count down those five minutes and at the end of the five minutes if they don't complete the level we are going to get a big pop-up message. So for now what we're going to be focusing on is getting the timer set up and then also getting the timer set up and shown on the screen just like you can see it in the bar here. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. So dive, dive into the engine and we need to actually open up the game mode. The reason why we're putting it in the game mode is so that if the player dies or anything like that, it's going to be persistently counting down, it's not going to be reset and nothing else is going to affect it. And this game mode is going to be the same on each and every single level as well, so it's good to have it in one persistent place. To open this up, just go ahead and open up the content browser and it should just be in your blueprints folder. Inside of here we need to do two things. First things first, we need to create a we need to create a variable for the minutes and the seconds. And then we're just going to be working some maths around this to change the values. So create the first variable by pressing the little plus icon and then just call it minutes. And then go ahead and do the same thing and call it seconds. But we need to make sure these are actually set to uh, set from booleans to integers so that they can actually have a number value. So go ahead and do that and just go ahead and set the value to uh, set the default values to uh, minutes. Let's just go ahead and dive in with zero minutes and we will start with 15 seconds so that when we're testing this out, making sure that it runs out of time, we don't have to sit there for minutes. Cool. So first things first, then let's go ahead and start firing off some script. The way that we're going to do this is we're actually going to use the event tick node. Now the reason why we're using this tick node is because it's going to continually fire off every single frame. But we're actually going to go ahead and put a delay on here so that it only fires off every one second. And to go ahead and set the duration to one second, and here we need to go ahead and do some maths now. So. First things first, we need to actually take away a second off of the time every single time a second passes. So go ahead and drag out completed and put in set second and there you are. And now we need to go ahead and use integer minus integer and we're basically going to be getting the second value and we're going to be taking away one from it. So go ahead and hook it up just like that. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to check as to whether or not the second value is, you know, sort of less than zero. If it's less than zero after we do this maths, we want it to take away a minute because we don't want it to go from sort of 59 to 58 to one or to zero and then go into the minus values. So we need to check to make sure it's not below that value. So we need to use a branch node to actually set up some conditioning. So drag out the little set here and just add in a branch and the maths that we're going to be doing for this is integer is less than, so let's go ahead and grab this, so it's going to return true if A is less than B. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to check to see whether or not second is less than zero. And if it is less than zero, we're going to go ahead and take away a minute. If it's false, we're not going to do anything. So let's go ahead and do it. So if it's true, we need to set minutes. And we're just going to go ahead and set this to minus one, basically. So integer minus integer, and then that should be one. And then hook up minutes to the A value. So what this is doing is checking as, sorry, that's not checking, but it is setting the minutes value to itself minus one. So if it's set to two already, it's going to get its, its own value, which is two. And then it's going to take one away from it, which will set it to one. So basically one less than what it will be now. So. Next up, what we need to do is we need to do one more thing, which is we need to set the value for seconds back up to 59 if it's just gone down to a minute. So you know when you're on the timer, it goes down a value, it goes back up to 59, 58, 57, and so on and so forth. So we've just got to go ahead and make that change to the second value. So set second, and this time we're just going to type in 59, and that is it. And that is perfect. Cool. 
So, one last thing that we need to do now is we actually need to check as to whether or not the minutes value is actually going below minus one or is equal to minus one or zero because we want to be able to end the game if it gets too low. And the way we're going to do that is it's going to add and the way we are going to do that is we're just going to add one last little piece of conditioning onto the end of this once all the maths and all of the subtraction and all of that magic has all been taken place. So we're just going to go ahead and add that branch node and we are just going to get integer is equal to or less than and we're going to go ahead and pop in minus one in here and we're going to get the minutes value in. So all of this does seem quite quite intimidating and a little bit confusing so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go over it one more time. If you guys do get a little bit confused just go ahead and copy the script that I've gone, run through the video a couple more times but anyway let's just go ahead and reiterate. So we have got the event tick node and we have hooked up the delay to it so that this only fires off once every second and once every second we're taking away one from the second value. After we do that we run a conditioning branch to check as to whether or not the second is less than one and if it is we go ahead and set one or take away one from the minutes. After we do that we just go ahead and set the 59, set the seconds to 59 to make it you know a brand new minute basically. And then we go ahead and do a little bit more conditioning to check to make sure the value hasn't gone into the minus values for the minutes so we know when the player's time is up. Hopefully that does make it a little bit simpler for you guys. Um, so let's just go ahead and do one thing. We're just going to put a print string on here just to tell the player when the time is actually up. So we're going to change in string to you ran out of time. And I'm going to go ahead and set the minutes default value to zero and seconds down to five. And if I go ahead and compile this and press play, if we go ahead and wait a second, or not a second, but five seconds, we should actually see it say time is up after five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, you ran out of time. And it's gonna keep on printing that string every single second, what well, it should do anyway, uh, what well, it will do in a minute when we make one more change, but it's that's a time up really. And from this, we can actually add in the back end for our end game stuff. Um, so one last thing that we are going to do is we're going to hook up the false value to this so that it runs this check every single time, regardless as to whether or not it's made any changes. Um, you know, just so we have a bit of peace of mind that it's not going to go into the minus values. And if we go ahead and compile it, press play again, every single second it's going to keep telling me we'll run out of time so the player cannot continue after they've run out. So there you are, and that is perfect. So next thing that we need to do then is we actually need to get the value displayed on the little timer bar at the bottom middle just like we have it in the heads up display. So let's go ahead and do that. The way we're going to do it is we are going to head into our HUD blueprint and we are going to put in some text values in there and then we are just going to pretty much link it up to the values that we've created for minutes and seconds. So give that a second to open up and let's go ahead and put, chuck in some text. We're going to need three text blocks for now one, two, and three. You're probably wondering a little, wondering why we need three of these. So one of them is actually just to be semicolons. So I'm going to go ahead and set the text to the semicolons. And then this one is going to be, I'm just going to change the text on all of these to zero, 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 just so I know roughly how it should be placed, what it will look like. So I'm going to chuck that in there, chuck in my semicolons as well. And lastly, my seconds as well. If it's off, you guys can play around with that a little bit. I'm just trying to do it nice and quickly for the video for you guys. So what we need to do now then is we actually need to bind the text for minutes to the minutes value. So go ahead and create a binding. Just go to details, text, and then create binding. And then if we go in here, we need to cast to the game mode as that's where it's being stored. So cast to side scroller game mode. And as for the object, we need to get a reference to get game mode or get game mode and hook it up in there. And then in here, we are going to get a reference to seconds, not seconds, minutes, get minutes. And then we're going to hook this up just like that. So if we go ahead and compile that, that is all good. Do the same thing now on the... Sorry, you need to go ahead and do the same thing now on the seconds as well. So get a reference, create a binding. Let's do that. So cast to side scroller game mode. Object wildcard, once again, get game mode. 
just type it in get game mode make sure there's a space in between it otherwise you won't find it and then get a reference to seconds or second and just hook it up just like that so go ahead and compile it close that up and then press play and we should see these starting to move now give it a moment to load up there you are so you can see our seconds going down three two one zero you've run out of time and that is perfect. If you want to test to make sure this is working 100% with minutes and everything, you could go ahead and open up the side scroller game mode. You could go into the minutes section and then you could go ahead and set the default amount of minutes to one or even what, yeah, let's go ahead and one minute and five seconds, it's perfect. So if we go ahead and press play, it's gonna get down to less than a minute in a second. It should change the first value to zero perfect and then 59 so it's just going down minute by minute and that is working great you guys could go ahead and wait up for the you ran out of time but i can assure you guys if you've got everything exactly as i have your timer is going to be working perfectly if your text is actually a little bit out of position like mine is once again we just need to make sure that we set up the anchor points so let's go ahead and do that select the first piece of text anchor and if i recall it's the bottom one once again the bottom one and then the bottom one once again and I'm going to move these over so it looks quite nice as well so there you are and that is perfect to me compile press play uh, give it a moment my computer is really slow at the moment actually there you are and we are perfect all good Anyway, so one last change actually, I'm going to make one change to the text so it actually always has a zero in it so it stays the same size. And, oh, and the way we're actually going to add these zeros before the text is quite simple. What we've got to do is we've got to dive into the graph and over here where we've got the two text node, we need to go ahead and set minimum integ integral digits to two and that will make sure there's always two digits there so it'll add a zero if it's a really low value. And we need to make sure we go ahead and do the same thing for get text zero and get text one and then we'll be all good. Go ahead and compile it and then just go ahead and press play. Ignore the, do the dog barking in the background. Give it a second. Almost there. And there you are, you can see now it says we've got one minute and two seconds and it does look quite nice. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for the video. We are going to be doing some really, really cool stuff with the timer. Once the player gets down to zero minutes, we're actually going to be having a pop-up saying, you know, you haven't finished. It's going to give the time, the points and all kinds of crazy things. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out.